Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie begins with a team of special forces, going into a building to capture a robot named Mosa. After they enter the building, they find a robot about to self-destruct, and immediately begin to flee. The scene shifts to the interrogation of a man named Yeya. The plot revolves entirely around him, a brilliant engineering student. During class, he helps his friend with a project, but the professor calls him, and asks to solve the equation written on the blackboard. He solves the equation using a method that had not been taught in class, and because of this, his professor gets irritated. Yeya claims that his method is more innovative and faster. He even offers to explain it to the professor, but he becomes enraged, and kicks him out of class. Yeya is a shy and introverted guy, so he leaves without saying anything. In the hallway, he is bullied by another student after accidentally pushing him. In addition, he suffers from some mental disorders, so he has difficulty communicating properly. Fortunately, his friend, Rika protects him from bullies. Yeya likes a girl named Mariam, but he dares not tell her his feelings. He secretly worries about her, and remains silent in her presence. Later that evening, Yeya is with his father, who is a watchmaker and helps him with his work. Yeya tells him about the school bully, and the fact that Mariam saw everything. His father tries to lift his spirits and console him. Then they decide to visit a small house they own, where they often played when Yeya was younger. Outside, a man named Nasser approaches Yeya and his father, to ask where his wife is. Apparently, Nasser's wife used to work for Yeya's father, but because Nasser harassed her, she fled from him. Yeya's father refuses to reveal her whereabouts, saying only that she has returned to her family. He stands up for Nasser's wife and protects her. Nasser is about to leave and threatens to return. Later, Yeya and his father arrive at the lodge. We learn from their conversation that Yeya was supposed to have a brother, who died during birth. His parents wanted to name him Mosa, and Yeya reveals that he built a robot with this name in honor of his brother. He built a sophisticated device, with which he can control the robot with the power of his thoughts. Yeya's father is surprised, and tells him that he could sell it in a children's store, and make money from it. At that moment, Miriam comes through the door, and Yeya gets up and leaves without even saying hello. The father asks if she likes Yeya, but she says no. Then, she tells how they met, he basically lent headphones, but when the time came to return them, she could not find him and had to ask her classmates, but no one knew Yeya. Back to the interrogation, where we learn that Yeya had difficulty socializing with people from an early age. Later, Yeya talks to his father about Mariam, and says that there is another student who is trying to woo her, and is more attractive than him. His father advises him to be brave and talk to her. Soon, Nasser returns with his men to teach Yeya's father a lesson. They enter the house, beat him, and steal everything of value. Meanwhile, Yeya hides in the kitchen with a knife in his hand, and doesn't have the courage to defend his father. The vandals finally set fire to the house and flee. Yeya, shocked, stands by, and watches his father die in silence. After his father's death, Yeya goes into depression. He decides to sell the house, and move into the small cottage, now the only memory of his father. He is very upset and feels guilty for not saving his father. Moreover, Nasser and his men got away with it, and are still at large. Yeya even tries to kill self, but he doesn't implement his impulsive decision. He begins to hallucinate, and sees his father talking to him. His father tells him that he must avenge his death, and he responds by saying that he is afraid. However, his father gives him the courage to use his gifted mind and build a robot, Mosa. He works day and night to build a super powerful robot. After finishing, he decides to put his creation into action, and goes to confront Nasser. His henchmen start chasing Yeya into an abandoned building. He hides in one of the rooms, and activates the robot. Suddenly, it knocks one henchman to the ground, and then eliminates the second one. Next, the robot heads toward Nasser, and throws a piece of wood at him. It then puts Nasser in the car, and welds the door, so that he cannot open it. After that, he sets it on fire and flips it over. Another henchman films the whole thing, and the robot spots him, but decides to let him go. The man shows the video to his friends, and soon it goes viral. Even the news starts to talk about the incredible power of the robot Mosa. During questioning, Yeya says that if it were not for those criminals, he would never have built a robot of that caliber. Soon everyone is scared, because a killer robot is on the loose. The Interior Ministry turns the case over to the police, but they hire a mechatronics professor named Ferris. They hire him to better understand the robot, and its technical characteristics. Thereafter, the police begin investigating the case, and Professor Ferris, who we saw at the beginning, takes on the responsibility of questioning Yeya. 
At Yeya's home, he finds a letter. The stranger who wrote the letter knows that Yeya had built Mosa. His friend Rika arrives at his house and confronts him. Later, we find out that one of the investigators involved in the case is also Miriam's father. He visits her in her hotel room, and makes sure she is okay. Rika discovers the diary with Mosa's sketches, and asks Yeya to see the robot. She assures him that she is there to help him. Next, it turns out that Professor Ferris has a sick son who needs an operation, but he decides to work on the case anyway. Rika takes Yeya to his large garage, to look for a car to hide Mosa. Yeya confesses that he has not told anyone else about the robot, not even Miriam. Rika advises him to talk to her, so he can probably win her over. She further states that they must work together to change the world, and Yeya likes the idea. Then Yeya reveals that a friend of his has sent a letter from the dark web, and asks him to kill criminals, who sell drugs and weapons and are involved in human trafficking. Rika and Yeya become a team, and start hunting down different criminals. They arrive at a large warehouse where criminals are holding youngsters hostage, for selling organs. Suddenly, Mosa smashes the wall with a car, and the criminals start shooting. The robot proves to be bulletproof, and easily manages to kill part of the gang. But when the enemy shoots at a container filled with gasoline, it explodes and sends the robot flying. Yeya becomes enraged, and Rika tries to calm him down. A criminal attempts to fire a bazooka at Mosa, but he manages to avoid it and falls to the ground. Meanwhile, a vandal comes out looking for Yeya, and climbs onto the roof. Mosa kills the criminals, frees the hostages, and then goes outside to neutralize the last remaining criminal. Finally, Yeya and Rika leave, and Mosa begins to become famous. The news report states that the robot has killed 20 criminals, leaving everyone speechless. When the police arrive at the scene of the crime, Ferris discovers a metal piece dropped from the robot, and informs his colleagues that Mosa is being controlled remotely. Yeya then teaches Rika how to use the robot, and she begins to dance. Subsequently, the duo kills other groups of criminals, and saves many people, and Mosa's popularity increases day by day. During the interrogation, Ferris becomes furious with Yeya, because he assumes that he could change the world and constantly taunts him. Rika takes Miriam to Yeya's laboratory, where she discovers that he is indeed behind Mosa. Miriam becomes enraged and believes that what he is doing is wrong. Finally, she tells him that he can be a hero even without the robot, and leaves. Yeya gets sad, and Rika tries to raise his spirits. Furthermore, she tells him that they must hide the robot, because they cannot trust Miriam. In fact, she is right, because a few days later, the police come to Yeya's house to look for Mosa. Fortunately, they find nothing, but they still take Yeya to the police station for questioning. Since they have no evidence against him, Yeya is released shortly after. We later learn that the professor's son's health is deteriorating, and the doctor advises him to get the operation done. Nevertheless, Ferris refuses, considering it too risky. The son is not afraid, and naively claims that Mosa will save him. It turns out that in addition to the police, a wealthy businessman, Samir Al-Ashkar is also looking for Mosa. He gets information from an agent and gets everywhere before the police. Professor Ferris goes to Samir Al-Ashkar with an offer. He says he knows that Yeya has made the robot, and that if they cooperate, he will deliver Mosa's project to him. When Samir Al-Ashkar asks him why he would help him, he replies that he wants to save his son from death. Ferris stages a terrorist attack on a train, and one of his men streams the entire hijacking on the internet. Soon, the news begins to spread. Yeya finds out, and takes Mosa and Rika with him. While Mosa tries to rescue the passengers on board, Miriam is kidnapped by Ferris's men. One of Ferris's men disables Mosa's connection with Yeya, and starts cutting off one of their hands with a chainsaw. One of the passengers pushes him, and Mosa reactivates. The robot defeats the criminals, and acts as a bridge, allowing people to pass from one carriage to another. Mosa manages to save the passengers, but its parts become damaged in the process. When Yeya arrives home, he discovers a recording showing that Mariam has been kidnapped. He begins to worry, but Rika tells him it is a trap. To rescue her, they personally go to Miriam's father, who calls Ferris. He tells him that Yeya has 24 hours to deliver Mosa, or Miriam will be killed. They know that this girl is Yeya's weak point, and they use her to get to him. Yeya finds Ferris's location and decides to go to him alone, without Mosa. First, however, he posts a video online, in which he reveals the whole truth, and leaves coordinates for the police to find the robot. When Yeya reaches Ferris, his men start looking for Mosa. Yeya sets a timer on Mosa, and the robot explodes. The news reaches Ferris, who asks Yeya to draw Mosa's project. Yeya asks Ferris to let Mariam go, and agrees to draw the robot's project. 
Miriam is released and gets into the car with Rika. Yeya gets up and starts drawing, but we see him pick up poison hidden in his shoe. Soon a car arrives, revealing that he is Yeya's friend from the dark web. The friend gasses the entire place, and Ferris's men begin to pass out. The friend also plants bombs in the structure. Yeya hides and calls Rika from her phone, asking her to leave the place immediately. She gives Miriam a letter, in which Yeya confesses his feelings for her. Finally, the building explodes, and everyone thinks Yeya is dead. However, Yeya's friend finds him alive, and takes him outside. We then see a mysterious man, who goes to the place where Yeya and Ferris met. This mysterious man takes one of Mosa's parts. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.